Hi hey y'all, I appreciate you stopping in to another tech uh, t uh, tech tip video here. It's kind of kind of hard on the tongue there, but uh, a tech tip video, man. I can't believe all the positive response I got on the first one, and man, guys, I appreciate it so much. And like I stated before, these videos are not going to be glamorous. It's basically going to be reading off some stuff, and uh, basically what I'm actually trying to do here, guys, is help the upcoming tradesmen and tradeswomen to the HVAC industry. And uh, maybe along the way, we might get a little refresher course to some of the season techs. Okay, guys, what we have here is what we call a flow chart. And most of these are in our service fact sheets that we get with our units. If not, we can actually, you know, get online, Google them. And like I said, you need to start downloading these PDFs and collecting them. But uh, nonetheless, I'm going to try to make it short and sweet. And uh, by no way on this video, too, is any of this written in stone. Let me repeat that. None of this is written in stone. This is just a guideline to help you get to where you may need to be so that you can actually fix or remedy the situation at hand. Now, there's going to be a lot of seasoned techs on here that go about things in a different way, but that's the only reason. They've been in the trade for so long. They already know how to, you know, hopscotch. They know, they know how to do all kinds of stuff. But uh, anyway, we're just going to get started here with the basic essentials. All right. Troubleshooting. Compressor fails to start contactor check. Okay, let's get started. Is the contactor energized? Has it pulled in, guys? You know what that means. All right, and let's say it has, and we don't have anything. So what this is saying is telling us to go to compressor won't start. That's going to be another flow chart. All right, so we'll get to that uh, in the future here. But right now we're going to say, is, con is the contactor energized? Has it pulled in? No. All right, so we're going to get our multimeter out. Check for 24 volts across or check for 24 volts AC across the contactor coil. Okay, now we're going to move along. Is voltage present at the contactor coil? If yes, we need to replace the contactor coil. If no, we need to check the control transformer and control fuse. All right, guys, let me move up here a little bit. Okay, check control transformer and control fuse. Is the control transformer and fuse good? Yes. Okay, so now what it's telling us, guys, is we need to go in there to the thermostat. We need to jump around the R to Y low voltage terminals at the thermostat sub base. All right, moving on. Does the contactor then engage? Does it pull in? Does it energize? Uh, yes. That's telling us that we need to replace the thermostat. Okay, right here, guys, this is where the uh, where if you have uh, if you've been in the trade for a while, you probably have a different way of doing this. Okay, this is like I said, this here is not written in stone. But this is a great starter point for play, you know, for the, the for the for the people new to the trade. Okay, does the contactor energize? No. Repair or replace connecting wiring. Okay, that's where we need to backtrack, guys, and we need to find out whether or not we got a, a short in the wire or something. All right, let's back up over here. Is the control transformer and fuse good? No, it's not. Okay, repair or replace the transformer or fuse. Investigate cause of failure, possible short in the field wiring. Right here, guys, I can't advocate enough. That's when you need to buy you a little popper, man. I've been on a job before where I was out in the middle of nowhere, and I probably had about 10 or 15 fuses, and I blew every one of them. I got lucky, but the last one, I finally found the short. Okay, also here too, guys, repair or replace transformer or fuse, investigate cause of failure. A lot of times, guys, and there's several great videos on here from some of my brothers, a lot of times, man, you can actually start out there at the unit where maybe a dog had chewed, chewed up the wire, and that's going to throw it, it's going to burn a transformer up in a New York minute. So, you know, we just need to investigate. All right, guys. All right, what we have here, guys, we have a single pole contactor. We have a double pole contactor. And right here we have L1 and L2, okay? That is our line in. That's our voltage coming in. T1 and T2 and T1 and T2 over here and L1 and L2 over here, it's the same. That's our line voltage coming in and this is our line voltage going out, okay? Now, here's the contactor coils they're actually asking us to test to see if we got 24 volts. All right, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed some of this. I hope you got something out of it. Like I said, I'm gonna try to keep these short and sweet. Um, I appreciate it so much for all your positive feedback I got on the last one and I reckon we're gonna make another one. So, uh, like I said, thank y'all so much and take care and we reckon we'll holler at y'all soon. Bye.